Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the HR Cafe. Um, usapang trabaho, buhay at iba pa. And for this today, we are we actually have a very good surprise because we not only have our usual faces, but four new co-hosts for this event. And also, our president, Coach Darwin Rivers, will present about the top HR trends in 2024. But before that our HR Cafe program. Welcome to the HR Cafe, where we'll feature the wow quote of the week, hot HR question and HR learning for the week, important HR news and updates, and free training segment, care of our special guest. We are your cafe servers. Our usual cafe servers is Coach Darwin, the founder and CEO of the Philippine HR Group, Mentor Rona Florentino, CEO of Uprush Social Geekers. Myself, who is an operations and HR leader and well-known content creator at TinaInManila.com. We also have Mentor Neil Lamagad, VP External of Philippine HR Group. And later on, Mentor Alan Cañete, Learning in HD, an OD consultant, and the president of... Uh, yeah. Then. This, and then we and joining us is also our HR Cafe host, uh, Mentor Oliver. Can you please briefly uh, introduce our, yourself to our audience? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Oliver Rickelman. You can just call me Lead for short. And uh, well, you can find me on LinkedIn and on FB under the same name. So uh, that's me right there. Very short one. All right. How about uh, Mentor Bonnie? Hi, Tina. Hi, everyone who's watching today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I've been in the Philippines HRG group since 2017, I believe, uh, when Dar started the group. So thank you, thank you for having me here. I'm the founder of Leading with Success. We specialize in uh, generative artificial intelligence training and solutions. We're delivering these transformative training for today's dynamic leader. Thank you, Tina. Back to you. Right now, we have over 70 people who are watching live at the show and more to come. You can watch our replay at the, at the HR Cafe page. Um, for everyone who is watching, please leave your name where you are in the Philippines and overseas so that we can give you a shout out later as a show, okay? Next, Paul, we have Mentor Jamie Iris. Mentor Jamie? Thank you, Mentor Tina, and of course, a welcome to everyone. I'm simply so glad to be part of the HR Cafe and to be one of the HR servers. I am an LND professional uh, focusing on international training, and at the same time now, I'm also trying to bring it in sa local so that I can further equip then ang ating mga kababayan to be more globally competitive. And at the same time, I'm also a digital content creator so that we can reach even more so that will be Jamie Aris Talk TV. All right. And lastly, okay. mentor Jake. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good also good afternoon to all our audience. Thank you, Tina and Darwin, for so I'm mentor the uh so we're, we are a social enterprise which is focusing on providing clean water and clean power to the Philippines. At the same time, I'm the director, business uh, director at IQBets Asia. So we do the training and certification for all professionals, not just also as an HR. So good afternoon. I'll be glad to be your server for this afternoon. All right. And with that, I'd like to greet our early birds. We have Clouds Flores. Good afternoon from Pateros. We have Miss Lai, who said, happy to be here from the morning session of UB Soler. From speakers is Coach Darwin and Miss Tina. Ngayon naman, we have afternoon learning sessions with the both of them. We also have Rhonda Brian Sartos, who's watching, and happy to be part of our webinar again. Uh, we have Marky de la Cruz, who is watching. We do also have Cez Alejos Toribio, who actually tagged her friends Jolie Ann Pitalbo, Jao de Guzman, Julie, de, Julie Faye Cayas. Uh, leading with success is saying, hi, Sherry. Um, Bonnie yon. So, And then we have Yelrins Casanya, who tagged her friend Shirley Akuba, and somebody who's watching from Cavite. Ayon. So next up, we have our wow quote of the week. Our wow, we, this is a way for us to inspire, 
for the next coming days. Our wow quote of the week is be prepared to ride the cycles and trends of life. Success is never permanent and failure is never final by Brian Tracy. Uh, Miss Mentor Bonnie, what do you think about the wow quote of the week? Oh, this is what success is made of, guys. I mean, when you see someone, they look like an overnight success. But behind that overnight success, it's 25 years of pain, of failure, different types of fa- failures, different types of mistake. And the only reason why they were a success is that they kept going and they gave themselves self-compassion and that self-compassion and kindness to themselves whenever they make a mistake is what make them resilient, what makes them resilient. And that's why, wow, they look like an overnight success. But the truth is, no one is an overnight success. I'm sure Tina and Jamie and Oliver and um, Jake and Jake, and I'm sure later on, you know, Darwin would say, these are all the mistakes and failures I had in the past. And the reason, the only reason I'm a success right now is because I had all those mistakes and failures and I gave myself self-compassion and kindness. And that made me resilient and that's why we're all here today. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. How about you? I know, sorry, Liv. All right. Well, first and foremost, I would like to say hi to Bonnie. It's actually my first time to really have an interaction with her. A few years back before pandemic, we only had two exchanges on LinkedIn, and that was it. Right? We had two exchanges and comments and uh messages as well but it's actually my first time to have this interaction with you so i guess going back uh, nice to have you here i mean so going back to the quote of the week the wow quote of the week well it's not about the things that we have made whether it's what we learned something out of it or not the fact is we keep on moving forward that's what's important in life we can never stop we just have to move forward whatever happened whether it was good or bad you will always be learning. If it was good, then you won, you you won something. But if it was not good, then at least you have learned something. But what's important is that we've been moving forward. So I guess it's not just only that for now, but like in general, right? Whatever you go, and I'm sure Bonnie will agree with me on this and the rest of the of the mentors. Back to you, Tina. All right, we'd like to greet Troy Abog, who's watching from KSA. We also would want to highlight. Uh, Sir Mark De La Cruz saying, maintain the winning spirit and be focused on your goals. How about you, Jamie? Yes, uh, if there's one thing this quote really uh, encompasses, just like what Mandar Boni and at the same time Oliver had mentioned, success. But for me, just like what I would also would like to add is not only success, but thriving success. Because for anyone Imagine who wants to success. continuously be successful is you really have to be prepared when it comes to uh, changes. So it's like riding the cycles and trends or the tide of life. Because uh, if we want to really be continuously successful, we must remember that success is never permanent. So stay humble. And at the same time, you know, always uh, be co- uh, collaborate with other people because uh, we need them as much as uh, they need us to. And lastly, of course, a failure uh, in life. Life is not about perfection. It's about pursuing excellence. Uh, Oliver had mentioned a while ago when it comes to moving forward. So if we make a mistake, you know, we our venture did not succeed at first. Well, just simply rise up, be resilient, uh, pivot, and move forward. So over to you, Tina. Juan Pito said, Think positively. And he is watching from Lapu-Lapu. Thank you and happy Sunday. Just mentor Jake. Hi, um, you've mentioned Roy Abug as one of our audience. I met him as well. Uh, he's one of our certified no, consultant. So he's from KSA. So thank you. Um, it's a good reflection for me about success because as I'm also doing some of the preparation for a reunion, some batch no, ng elementary, I've, I've seen a lot of people who went through successes and failures. And those people, like, for example, uh, a high flyer during our times are not really booming their personal and professional life. While for those people na talagang... Mm-hmm. 
colleagues who so meet up during the time, I've seen this is an attribution of a good habit to success, and which we commonly uh, cited as habit uh, as we set and working towards our goal. So when we have this goal in mind, I believe um, we can be successful as we maintain a positive outlook in our life um, with all the processes that we've been through and taking actions despite of the fear of uncertainty. So right now, um, as you, we've mentioned, you know, there's an ever-changing um, changes in our society and environment. So this fear of uncertainty will really push us as long as we have a good habit for us to be successful. So no matter what we um, encounter being su successful or failure, let's think of an end mine, which is to target our goal. So that's on my part, Tina. All right. So it's a good reminder for all of us na huwag masyadong mainggit sa mga taong mas mayaman, mas maganda, at mas successful kaysa sa atin because it's like a balloon. What goes up will also come down. And it's really what a matter of living every day at the most so that you enjoy the process and not just the end goal. And we move towards the HR questions of the week. Nako, uso na ngayon ang e-signatures for employment-related notices in the Philippines. For example, for contracts, probationary extensions, NTEs, dismissal letters, lalong lalo na because of COVID, are these valid sa dole? Mentors? Jake? Hello. Up, All right. Sir Lim? So I remember. Yeah. Hi, hi. Mm -mm. Go. Uh, Jake, right, go so. ahead. Okay. <laughs> So I remember we're using before uh, DocuSign. This is a an yes. e-signature. No, it's a platform we're in. We use uh, these for the contract signing or employment contracts, and um, also NTE, especially during the time when we are in a COVID situations. So with that, um, I believe this is um, illegal. Okay, uh, I'm actually looking at at. Um, the articles, but even when I consulted with our lawyer, I just cannot cite it yet right now, the the RA. But definitely it's a legal wherein we can, uh, even the government asks us to to have uh, secured it, no? uh, yung ating mga files in, in a form of um, e-signature and e-filing. So, mm -hmm. yes. All right. Other mentors? Jamie, do you have a, an opinion? Do you guys use it? Oh, for me, it's more on, I'm, I worked internationally. So there are some documents that uh, they allow e-signatures. However, for anything uh, that needs the actual signature, so they will just uh, be informing, depends on uh, like the country or the company or the mandatory uh, the mandatory requirements of that particular governing uh, country. Because like, for example, when I work at the Five Star Hotel, we will follow, of course, Abu Dhabi. And then uh, when I worked in the U.S., so it will be as per the U.S. standards. Now, as per the Dole, so uh, now I'm going to start here as a Philippine. So um, we will take a look also if ano yung magiging requirement nila. How about other questions? Well, Tina, when it comes to that, it will always depend on the importance, degree of importance of the document. So if it's just only for, for the purpose of documentation within the corporate uh, structure, then that is highly uh, recognized. If it's something that you have to submit to a government agency, then a physical, a physical backup would be, would be even more uh, uh, efficient rather than sufficient. Although by DOLE, it recognizes, DOLE recognizes... Uh, uh, e-signatures are sufficient enough, no sufficient document to submit, but then it will never it will never hurt for you to back it up with the actual document. So that's my take on that because even before COVID came or before pandemic happened, we have already been uh, utilizing e-documents before that. But just the same, it's due diligence. So common sense will tell you the degree of importance of the document. 
So if it's just within the office, then e-signatures will suffice. But if it's something that you need to submit to a government agency, then common sense apply. You need to back it up with the actual document itself. Mentor Bonnie. Or back to you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, everyone. So yes, electronic signatures are legally recognized in the Philippines and are provided for in Republic Act Number no. 8792 and the Electronic Commerce Act of 2000, the E-Commerce Act, and its implementing rules and regulations. So thank you to our uh, legal counsel <laughs> who provided that over at the chat box. Thank you, thank you. You'll know who is later. <laughs> Ayun, the question, tama naman, it is already legally accepted uh, for those, it, and I think for me lang, operationally, HR should be conscious about what type of employees they have because the assumption is the employee will recognize that the e-signature actually came from them given that it's their own email address that is sent to but as a, what do you call it? As a, if you feel that the person is has a tendency to be dishonest, because he who alleges must prove it during at, at court, right? So if the person has a tendency, or if the if the group labor group has a tendency not to tell the whole truth, you might want to reinforce it by actually having a hard copy or even video or CCTV evidence. Kasi pwede din kasing sabihin, ay sorry, nahack yung email ko, kaya hindi nangyara yon. We know it's almost impossible, but it can happen. So always, it is legal, but to be sure, you know, you have to make, you have to be sure you need to have other plan B, plan C. Para lang yung Gcash sending eh, di ba? May two-step verification process para walang gulo at all point in time. We now have over 150 people watching her, so every mentor is hot. And with that, what is the HR learning of the week? A skills gap is a difference between skills that the employers want or need and skills their workforce can offer. Conduct a skills gap analysis to help you identify skills you need to meet your business goals. Who among you use actively skills gap in your organization mentors go ahead jamie uh yes of oh, this is very important indeed especially for uh learning and development and training and development so uh that at least whatever uh, type of learning interventions or training sessions that we actually have to create for example whether it's a company and at the same time, or kung kaya naman po sa department, kinakailangan talaga accurately determine ano ba ang skills gap so that at least you will know, kailangan ba ng retraining or talagang training kung talagang wala silang alam. So that at least hindi sayang yung time, i-invest yung time nila, plus of course the resources of the company. Plus, this really helps a lot when it comes to at the end of each month and later on at the year para malaman natin were we able to uh, help yung ating mga employees, uh, kumbaga yung, yung skills ba nila matching sa kung anong kailangan natin i-deliver, lalo na kung customer-centric. Siyempre, ang ating mga company, so are they really equipped enough and empowered to really do that? So once you do the skills gap, at least hindi lang tayo off the shelf ng mga trainings na kinukuha. At kung kukuha tayo ng external ng mga trainers, then alam natin kung ano yung kailangan i-address and how to evaluate it. So napaka-importante talaga niya. Other mentors? Any feedback? Do you guys use it? Yeah, I'll bank on kay mentor Jamie regarding dun sa TNA that we use the skills, no? the gap analysis. And um, so while we do that, um, even for company now, as we look at the skills, about the soft skills and the hard skills, we're also looking at how these will be effective in the organization and personnel. So sometimes kasi they have this uh, gap wherein... Um, the the employer wants this gap to be intervened, alright? Pero pagdating naman sa kanilang personal life, hindi talaga yon. So during the career um, counseling that I had with them, so dapat ayon nagmamatch no yung personal nila and the organizational goals that we have. So one example is yung the technological changes that we wanted to shape the workforce, right? So most of our people uh, are in millennial, whereas for those in man management level, so nandun sila, no? And uh, when we apply all different platforms and um, technologies in the companies, 
uh, na feel nila na parang teka lang hindi naman to kailangan it's been uh, with us for many years and our skills has been adapted throughout the years wherein those people are here na na bago and they want more efficient uh, they see that you know if we want if we have this then our skills need to develop in the technology but uh, after words it it booms another um, questions about performance once we did this skill gap and the ana- we analyze it what would be the effect of our performance so i think yun yung dapat sagutin then after we did the skills gap analysis Wow, sobrang deep talaga na mga feedback ng ating mga mentors. But we will move forward to announcement. So can we actually have Ms. Bonnie to update from the Dole? And here's our update for the week from Department of Labor and Employment. Uh, the state of labor and employment rates remains positive. This is good news. Philippines unemployment rate was at 3.6% in November 2023 lower than the reported 4.6% in November 2022 and October 2023. The employment rate also increased to 96.4% from 95.8% in November 2022 and October 2023 and November last year. Back to you. Oh, here's more? All right. So, Dole na nga ako na itataguyod ang kapakanan ng mga caregiver natin. Alam naman natin that this is one of our labor supply in the international market. Nagpahayag ng suporta ang Department of Labor and Employment Dole sa layunin ng pamahalaan sa pagtataguyod ng disenteng trabaho at proteksyon. Laban sa pangaabuso, this is very important. Karahasan at pagsasamantala sa mga caregiver sa pamamagitan ng Caregiver's Welfare Act. Republic Act Number 11965 o ang Caregivers Welfare Act. Ang batas na inaasahang pakikinabangan ng lumalaking bilang ng mga Filipino caregivers, particular ang pagtataguyod at proteksyon sa mga prinsipyo at karapatan sa paggawa. Pagbibigay diin ng dole. I think this announcement is good news to everyone and quite surprising to some kasi we know somebody na naghahanap palagi ng trabaho pero lagi nang nareklamo ng hirap daw maghanap ng trabaho. But as we can see, dollar reports that our, our, the Philippine unemployment rates is actually very reasonable and low. Why do you guys think siguro Sir Liv na maraming naghahanap ng trabaho pero sa totoo lang maraming trabaho naman na available kasi nga ang baba nga ng unemployment rate. Yes, that is true, Tina. No? Ang baba ng ano natin. Um, doon ko kasi yan eh. Unang, mm. unang una, marami naman tayo talaga naghaharap ng trabaho. Problema, Correct. do they fit in in those, in those jobs available? Now, mm. for two reasons. One, maybe the job is not attractive because of distance. Second, the job may be fit for them, but then the pay is not, it doesn't match the expectation. So regardless right. of the fact that there is a huge... Uh, uh, gap while we try in, in the corporate or even in the government, we try to match those gaps. Still, uh, may pagkukunan pa rin tayo ng, ano eh, ng uh, result eh. Ibig ko sabihin yung motivation coming off from these people that they are not motivated enough to pursue it is probably coming from two things. So, the distance and of course the pain. So, yun yung ano natin doon. But uh, anyhow, this is a good thing, right? Hmm, hmm. When there's more jobs available, when the people are employed, they have more things to do, they have money to spend, and it keeps the economy going. Next up is the... But, um, Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Tina. Uh, I just forgot to add to that. Though. So, like right now, I, I have one, one of my clients is in a construction company. So, they're having a hard time looking for um, blue-collar jobs, so blue-collar workers, so carpenters, uh, Mason. So, ang unang tanong doon parati sa kanila is uh, gaano kalayo? And then second, magkano yung offer? Now, hmm. mind you, no matter how difficult life is, by about 3 in every 10 would always, uh, would tend to to decline the job offer, even if the pay is high, but if the distance is too far. So, meaning these two variables have to be in the same level of expectation in order for them to to accept the job. So, well, it may not be that related to the to the law that was cited earlier, but you know, when you look at when you look at uh, uh, in terms of filling up those positions or those available jobs out there, 
um, da- dapat kasi magkatugma yung distance saka yung pay eh, for the living mm. condition. So Pina, you're mm. you're about to present something. Sorry, I interrupted you there. No problem. I'd like to greet Sir Romar John. Sabi niya, Ma'am Tina, we recently saw you at the UP Solar webinar. Once again, guys, if you have time, please visit the UP uh, School of Labor and Industrial Relations. They offer a very good program for anyone who wants a deep dive on HR and industrial relations. Please watch our seminar there. And with that, update from the Philippines SSS. Do you guys know that you can already file your retirement benefit claim online as long as many other benefits? Sobrang advance na ng ating SSS na kahit ang utang natin from 20 years ago nandun din naka-record sa online portal. You can check your eligibility, prepare the requirements, and follow the step-by-step guide. And those who are eligible are those who are at least 60 to 64 years old as of the date of retirement. And for all SSS members who are at least 65 years of age up to the date of online filing of claim, whether or not still employed or self-employed. So sa mga taong over 60 plus na, na hindi pa nakakapag-file, please file so you can get your retirement benefit uh, as a result of paying all those contributions from many years ago. What are the prerequisites for filing? Go to your branch so that you have a registered my.sss account if you cannot access it. Kasi minsan when you try to register, hindi siya gumagana. Alam mo naman mga senior citizens. You can go to the branch at the date of kung saan yung last number ninyo para matulungan kayo ng maayos. You must also have an approved disbursement account. This means you need to have a bank account registered under your name, not your kid's name, not your spouse's name under your name because SSS wants to ensure that you get the money for you and hindi yung nilakad ng anak mo or asawa mo pero ayaw yung bigyan ng pera. Okay, next po. How to apply? Log into your my.sss member account via www.sss.gov.ph. Click on apply for retirement benefit under the benefits tab. Enter the date of separation if you're employed or the date of cessation of business or self-employed for self-employed. And then click proceed. Ang bilis-bilis lang po, di ba? Next po, review the address, contact information, disbursement account, and employment history. You have to make sure kompleto yan. Kung hindi siya kompleto, pakisabi agad kasi sayang naman pag may mga contributions kayo na hindi na-capture. Choose the applicable answer to the questions kasi madali lang naman yung mga tanong. Click proceed to continue with the application for retirement. Validate the required information sheet. Then, click proceed. When you apply, carefully read the online certification with an undertaking and then click certify and submit. Make sure binasa talaga ninyo kasi once na click nyo na yun, walang bawian. Take note of your transaction number. Kung ako sa inyo, screenshot ninyo, put in paint. Save as a JPEG file and print it out and then click OK to ensure that you have a record na nag-apply kayo. Take note of the transaction number. Check your registered email or my.sss inbox for the SSS notification regarding the status of your submitted RBCA. Lastly, employers must certify through my.sss the RBCA filed by their employees. This ensures that your person is still employed and is your la- and you are the latest employer of the member per SSS record. Make sure also that you have received the email cer- notification for the successful certification of the employee separation from employment. With that, uh, how to certify? Napakadali lang yan. It's the same as certifying with the sickness or maternity benefits of your employee. And if you want to get the full guidelines, you can look at circular number 2021-021 on the enhanced online filing of retirement benefit claim through the MyDotSSS portal. If you have any other questions, you can scan the QR code below. With that po, next po for the other updates of SSS. Is it Ma'am Jamie? Or is it Jake? Hello? Okay, uh, let me share the update for uh, from uh, the Philippine Social Security system or SSS mga kababayan ayan po wa, babala po sa publiko huwag magpa loko uh, dahil po uh, marami pong 
uh, gumagawa ng mga scam nowadays. So, technology had advanced, but at the same time, uh, kumbaga, ang mga scammers then po, they are actually advancing also their schemes. Kaya po, walang ginagawang papremyo or pamimigay ng pera o regalo ang SSS para sa mga miyembro at beneficiaryo nito o maging sa publiko. Kaya, huwag po maniniwala sa mga balita. post or private messages sa social media na nagsasabing kayo ay nananalo sa raffle draw ng SSS. Or kung hindi naman po kaya, kayo ay meron daw pong oportunidad na nagsasabing kayo ay nanalo na mabibigyan ng cash or regalo mula sa SSS at ang kapalit ng inyong pag-click na binigay na link nila ay ang pagbibigay ng inyong personal information. Mga Uh, employers at employees, ito po ay isang paraan ng panloloko upang makuha ang inyong personal na data. Kaya huwag maniwala dito at huwag nang ikalat pa sa iba. Sabi nga po ng SSS, mag-isip at maging mapanuri. Think before you click. Kaya po heads up employers to enable the seamless electronic processing of claims for involuntary separation or un un unemployment benefits. So may proper processing po ito. So, yun po muna yung ating babala sa publiko na any SSS-related text messages na from like yung mga numbers po na unknown, hindi siya talagang SSS, please consider that a scam and never ever click those links. But then again, for involuntary separation or unemployment benefit, but uh, if you want to apply po, any members who were involuntary separated from their jobs, the SSS will implement an online employer certification starting February 1, 2024. So through their My SSS accounts, employers now shall be required to confirm the details of the members' involuntary separation before the claim can be electronic, uh, electronically certified by the Department of Labor and Employment uh, at the same time po ng DMW para sa mga OFW. Ayan po yung QR code just in case po you want to know more and read about this. And over to you, Tina. Updates from Pag-ibig. Ayan. Everyone, magkabahay for less. I believe we all want that. Ayan. So thank you, Pag-ibig. There is and there are acquired assets for sale. So can you check that QR code and can you get your phone and you can just over over your phone over to the QR code over there and you'll see the list of uh, the acquired assets. Um, I remember sabi nila dati, acquired assets are far more cheaper than the ones that are, you know, for sale. So if you want to invest on a house, maybe you can create and check this out, this QR code and see the list of acquired assets. Baka dun sa gusto nyong location, merong acquired assets na gusto nyong idaan sa pag-ibig. So the Pag-ibig Fund invites all members uh, to check all available Pag-ibig acquired assets from Luzon, Visayas, and Pindanao. The Pag-ibig Fund housing loan allows you to borrow up to 6 million pesos under very low rates and at the friendliest terms to help you fulfill your dream of owning a home. Meron bang resort dyan, uh, mentor Tina? <laughs> Ayan. So, and you can download the virtual Pag-ibig mobile app. It now has more than 3 million downloads. You can download this at the iOS App Store if your phone is an iPhone and Google Play if your phone is an Android. Uh, that's Pag-ibig at your fingertips. Download on your phone today. Ayan. Mas madaling ma-access ang inyong Pag-ibig account. Makita ang inyong savings, mag-apply for loans. We bring you the pag-ibig you deserve kahit saan. We'd like to greet uh, Gary Te Tejucos from Lupi Soler. Thank you again for your shout-out. And it was really nice for us to guess, to guess at, your, at your school. We would also like to go, uh, greet Gay Nakuban, who tagged Jason Fabular. And uh, Gladys Demdem Escote, who's happily watching from Sorsogon. Uh, and then, who is it? And Daday Xelaje Dino, who's watching from Paranaque. Next spot, PhilHealth. 
So with regards to PhilHealth, members can expect higher benefits from PhilHealth. As we can see, tumaas na po ngayon ang PhilHealth contributions sa mga Pilipino. At ang dami nagre-reklamo kasi sabi naman nila na baka mapskandalo ang kanilang pera. But don't you worry po kasi naman po, even if it's tumaas siya from 4%, naging 5% lang. Maliit na taas lang, pero tataas daw ang ating mga benepisyo pagdating ng 2024. So expect higher discounts when you actually get hospitalized. So it's not all a loss and it was already told to us even years before. So doon lang tayo po susunod. Sa mga taong ayaw mag-akyat, please akyat, mandatory po yan sa batas. Next po is hatid ng PhilHealth ang arugang tulad ng mga kalinga ng mga magulang. mag po sa PhilHealth Consulta para magseguro na magandang kalusugan at iyong pamilya sa pamamagitan ng primary care services tulad ng check-up at consulta. Check-up at consulta kasama ang individual health education para sa dagdag kaalaman na may sakit and health screening and assessment. Alright, next slide po. Jake, is that you? Hello? Okay, sagot din po ng PhilHealth ang ilang mga gamot para sa iba't ibang sakit sa ilalim ng PhilHealth Consulta. So as you can see here, even amoxicillin is sagot sa PhilHealth. The problem is hindi lang po natin alam na sagot siya. Pero now that alam natin na amoxicillin, simvastin, so there's a lot of drugs, paracetamol, can be used using your PhilHealth. So, magrehistro para sa PhilHealth Consulta, Consulta sa Natsulit at Tama. And if you want more information, you can call back their channel at 0917-898-7442. Look at philhealth.gov.ph for more information because you might actually be missing out on many savings if only you were just informed. We'd like to greet Faith Labista who's watching from General Santos City. We want to also greet Anne Apostol, who is watching from Caloocan City. Ah, and then, Xarina Halos Villa Vicencio, who is watching from Lepa. And with that, this is now our mainstay, which is our guest speaker is today is our mentor, Coach Darwin Rivers, who will talk about the top HR trends in 2024. So our speaker profile is all right coach darwin let me introduce coach darwin sobrang galeng <laughs> coach darwin has more than 20 years of progressive leadership and management experience in both operations and human capital departments with top 500 companies like dhl cytel dupont canon asurion and united health group he is a product of pup where he took up BSI Sociology and University of Philippines Solaire, where he took his post-baccalaureate studies in industrial relations. He has a diploma in international human resources management and diploma in managerial psychology. He is a firm believer of education, which led him to finish several certifications, which includes the Certified Human Resource Professional, a Certified Professional Manager, Certified Life Coach, Certified Emotional Intelligence Professor, and he is also a certified Six Sigma Green Belt. He was a student leader and a multi-awarded HR executive. And the most recent accolades are the following. The 2018 Pillar of Youth Awardee of the National Youth Commission. 2019 HR Leadership Award of the Employer Brands Award. He is a 2019 Top 11 LinkedIn Top 100 Filipinos to follow. In 2020, he was one of the top. 500 global HR leaders in the world by the 25th HRD Congress in India. He was also the top 8 of LinkedIn's top 100 Filipinos, top 9 in 2021, top 11 in 2023. He's one of the most outstanding young professionals in 2022, ranked 22 of top 30 Filipino leaders in LinkedIn 2022. He is the top out of 45 HR leaders who are transforming the way of work in 2022, Platinum HR Leader of the Year, awarded by the International HR Institute in 2022, so on and so forth. Grabe. Grabe talaga. He is also the founder of the Philippine HR Group, the largest online community of HR and HR allied professionals with over 320,000 members and growing. He is a, a chairman of the group 
and has been featured in different radio, TV, and print as a resource speaker. He is also a, fav a former radio host of DZRJ AM Radio. He is a constant figure sobrang galing, of public events through his speaking engagement and is currently working as the VP for Human Resources at a global VPO company. And with that, Coach Rivers, let's welcome you to talk about the 2024 trends in managing a high-performing employees. Go! Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, mentors and coaches. I'm really, really happy because I'm seeing uh, my new uh, sets of mentors here at the HR Cafe. We have mentors Bonnie, mentors Jamie, mentors Jake, and of course, mentor Oli. Actually, Maraya pa po, uh, will be seeing uh, mentors Ray and um, sino pa ba? Si Ray and si sila Alan uh, in, and of course Mentor Rogana in the next in the next episode. But my discussion for today is about 2024 trends in managing high performing employees. Of course, this is something that I presented during the World HR Summit last December of 2023, where I talk about what are the trends that will be happening in 2024 and uh, i actually presented it as the 24 trends in managing high performing employees so let me just start with this with the data that i have uh, gathered from gallup do you know that 66 percent of employees worldwide are considered satisfied employees that's only 66 percent meaning one third of the employees are not satisfied with their current work, which can lead to what? Decrease in productivity, increase in absenteeism, and of course, higher attrition. This is according to Gallup in their 2023 report. Also in that report, it shows that 12% of employee productivity uh, increases for those companies with high highly satisfied workforce so these are these are the companies where their employees are highly satisfied and when their employees are highly satisfied they increase their productivity and their revenue by 12 percent comparing to their market and their competitors now in the philippines the average attrition rate last year is 18%. But do you know that the Philippines has one of the highest employee attrition rate in Southeast Asia? And you know what? We've learned about that during the international conference in Singapore, where all of the attrition, annual attrition of each and every country in Southeast Asia were presented. The Philippines is one of the highest in terms of average attrition rate. So my discussion for today is how can we ensure that we are able to make our employees satisfied? So employee, is it employee satisfaction? Well, basically there are four critical E's in managing employee. And when I say these are the four critical E's, what I mean about this are first employee engagement, Second is employee enablement. Third would be employee satisfaction. And of course, employee experience. Tatandaan nyo po ha, importante po ang apat na to when you do your employee strategy. Employee engagement means that this is the level of passion where employees have towards their job in their organization. This is how the employee bears themselves when they're put into their work, kumbaga, pride in the workplace. How are they uh, engaged at work? When we say employee enablement, this is really more of providing employees with what? The tools, the mechanism, and enriching them with the right skills so that they can develop and grow into the best of they can be as an employee or 
uh, so that they can also move into the corporate ladder. And this can be in any form. This can be physical posts, as I mentioned, skills training, or mentoring, or whatnot. So in enablement, employee enablement, is you're enabling your employees to do better from his or her current state. Now, when we say employee satisfaction, this is really more of how you would measure how happy the employee are in your company. When we say how happy, it also means how contented the employees are. Uh, are they more likely to stay in your company or are they looking into other opportunities elsewhere? So employee satisfaction is really how the employee feels if he or she will stay with the organization. And you employ experience, which is actually the most important, although all of these four E's are very important, employee experience is the totality of all of the three. So employee experience is the overall experience of the employee gets when working with your company. It starts from pre-hiring, meaning from the time that you hire nyo pa lang sila, from the time that you source you pa lang sila, you experience sila on how you guys interview them, how you guys process their application, up to the time that they're being onboarded, and up to the time that they're being trained and being uh, uh, they're being productive in your company, and even up to the time that they separated. So that is employee experience. And for us people leaders and for us HR leaders, the four E's is very critical in managing high-performing employees. Okay? Now, what is the employee experience formula? And what I'm sharing to you is a uh, formula coming from Coveo. According to Coveo, the right formula is employee experience plus employee engagement equals empowered employees. And empowered employees is also the equivalent of engage in, uh, satisfied employees, which would increase your employee experience. So employee engagement, again, that will be your the purpose, the motivation, the goals, the recognition, the collaboration, the team experience, communication, and trust. All of these are part of employee engagement. Employee enablement, as I mentioned earlier, this is how you equip and empower your employees. What are the tools that you're giving them? What are the trainings that you're giving them? What are the information, the resources that you're sharing to them? And how are you building your employees for success? Right? So this is part of employee enablement. And when you combine employee engagement with employee enablement, it equals to employee empowered employees and an empowered employee is what a satisfied employee because a satisfied employee would mean that he or she is getting his job done and he is very happy with his uh uh organization and with all of these three it would mean that your employee experience goes up. Again, employee experience is how the employee thinks about the company. Overall experience, kumbaga, this is very important. So now you know what employee experience formula is. Now, let's go to the nitty-gritty of uh, how are we are able to uh, strategize our 2024 uh, plans for employee engagement or employee management. And with regards to trends, I will be telling you what are the trends for 2024. Number one trend would be prioritizing diversity, equity, and inclusion. This has been around for quite some time now, and it's gaining momentum. And a lot of companies are realizing that having diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of their policy is very important. And why is it important? Developing uh, a DNI strategy that is aligned with the organization's overall values and goals helps employees understand where he or she is in the company. What 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 is his or her role in the organization uh, having 
the 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 policy of diversity and inclusion right and also when you create a diversity and inclusion or you prioritize diversity equity inclusion you you need to provide training across your employee spectrum with regards to different unconscious bias and cultural competencies you know what one of the challenges of launching a very good diversity, equity, inclusion programs or creating policies aligned to diversity inclusion is each and every one of us from rank and file, even up to management, has our own unconscious biases. And because of those unconscious biases, those are the things that hinders equality, it hinders diversity, it hinders inclusion. So we need to have training for it so that we can understand what are those unconscious biases and how can we improve our cultural competency as an organization. Also, creating employee resource groups, alam yon, a lot of companies, uh, especially in multinational companies and large uh, conglomerates, they have what they call uh, employee resource groups. And when we say employee resource groups, these are uh, clubs or groups that employees have shared passion uh, or shared um, uh, hobby. For example, you create a uh, employee resource group for for people who are mountaineers, who are uh, or, or people who do biking, or people who are into the arts, or employees who are into uh, nature, uh, or or employees who are into cooking. It's very important that you create these clubs or what we call employee resource groups because, as we all know, employees spend what eight to 12 hours of their lives at work. And they need to feel that it's not a routinary thing that they're doing at work. They need to feel that they are doing something important to them and something aligned to their passion. And if you create employee resource groups, then work will be very fun because they're able to connect with people with co-employees who have the same passion who have the same motivation who have the same interests right and if you have those cert clubs it will be very easy for you to engage your employees because sila sila mismo they're they're really promoting your company they're really strengthening your culture and really making sure that each and every member are engaged. Now, also part of uh, diversity inclusion, equity inclusion, is holding employees accountable for creating an inclusive workplace. And this is very important. That's why it's it's very important to incorporate diversity inclusion, not only in your policies, not only in your processes, but also in your handbook and also in your code of conduct. Because people who are, people need to understand that they need to respect diversity, equity, and inclusion. And if you do not put it in your policy, if you do not put it as part of your code of conduct, if there's no mechanism to actually uh, ensure that uh, people who would violate diversity inclusion would be corrected, then there will still be a lot of ambiguity and animosity. But if you create a strong policy, a strong process, a mechanism that supports diversity, equity, inclusion, then people across all groups would be able to uh, feel accountable to ensure that diversity, equity, inclusion is something that they respect and that they support. So number one trend in 2024 is diversity, equity, and inclusion. The next trend is really promoting employee well-being. And this is coming from the fact that we've been into the pandemic for three years. We're in, during the pandemic, there's a lot of realization of employees. Realization that health is wealth, that family first, that there are more important things than uh, physical health, but mental health is also very important. Now, 
companies should understand that they need to invest in employee well-being now because if you you really promote employee well-being it does not only help in making sure that employees are healthy that they're not absent that they're not tardy but also that they are productive at work and when you do that you are offer you can do that by offering flexible working arrangements you can uh, create a policy that uh, uh, employees can work at home or do telecommuting or also have flexi time at their work diba? it it gives an opportunity for employees to spend more time with their families or to spend more time in doing things that they they value outside work Another thing is providing access to health and wellness programs. That's the reason why, remember, um, a lot of companies right now in the Philippines are offering HMO programs or health insurance programs. But a lot of employees would normally raise uh, concerns about their current HMO programs because it's very important for employees to have access to uh, clinics, to hospitals, to doctors, and health and wellness programs is being provided by your HMO provider. But also, you have to work with your HMO provider to create programs in your company. Diba? Hindi lang siya basta-basta something na i-avail ni employee. You need to have regular health and wellness programs in your organization. And um, a part of a, a part of it is that you can you can create a uh, what a regular uh, uh, exercise or fitness uh, group sessions with the employees or uh, create a regular mental health uh, wellness awareness awareness program with your employees or um, provide discounts for gym membership or provide access to uh, organizations that provide counseling because mental health, physical health, and even emotional health is very important to your employees. And if the employee sees that you're taking care of their total health and well-being, then why would I leave? Why would your employees leave, right? So another thing is encouraging employees to take breaks and vacation. Companies are offering paid time offs like vacation leaves and sick leaves. But uh, there are still companies who, instead of granting uh, leaves to their employees, uh, sila sabi nila because of business exigencies, hindi nila nag-grant yung leave benefit to employee. But you know what? Granting leave uh, or vacation leaves or breaks to employees is very important because we have to remember you're dealing with people, not machines. And unlike machines, uh, kung ang machine nga may wear and tear, di ba? So lalo na ang human being. Human beings need to rest. Humans need to go out of their routine. Human beings need to be able to uh, be in a situation where ano siya, uh, total rest and uh, not bogged down by different uh what uh different workloads or different uh timelines of uh reports or whatnot please for all hr leaders and people leaders out there i implore you grant your employees to take their breaks and their vacations because that's very important to them Another thing aligned to promoting employee well-being would be creating a supportive work environment that values work-life balance. And this is, uh, you can do this by training your leadership team and your frontline managers to understand that they need to, one, manage their workforce in terms of hindi po pwede na pag, uh, na mag overtime lagi ang mga employees, kailangan na po-project nila kung ano yung uh, workforce na kailangan nila. Kasi if you keep on giving overtime to employees, your employees will be fed up or they will be tired. And at, uh, an employee who's tired will no longer be productive. Diba? You need to manage your human resources in a way that you value your their own work-life balance. 
So number two in terms of HR trends at 2024 is promoting employee well-being. Now let's go to the third HR trend, which is investing in employee development. And again, part of uh, career development of an employee, this is something that most employees are looking for. I mean, the reason why employees are resigning is not only because of their managers, not only because of their pay, not only because of their co-workers, but also they're not seeing any form of uh, development in their skill set and in their careers in your company. That's why it's very important to invest in employee development. Wag po kayong sa mga leaders, HR leaders and uh, people leaders, people managers, do not uh, scrimp on sending employees in workshops, training, seminars, conferences, because that's part of employee development. Right? Providing training and development opportunities for employees, investing on their training helps them not only to acquire new skills, but also be able to acquire new networks that will be able to help them in improving their own personality, in improving their own skill set. Another thing is encouraging employees to attend conferences and workshops because through this conference and workshops, they're able to network with people with the same uh, interests, uh, line of work, who would be able to teach them the best practices. And those best practices, but adala nila sa company ninyo, di ba? So do not... Uh, uh, be fearful of investing with your employees in terms of development. Another recommendation is offering tuition reimbursements for employees who want to pursue further studies. I mean, we've seen people in the corporate world who are not college graduates but were able to climb the corporate ladder. But I recommend that identify these people and Try to convince them to go back to school to finish their diploma, to finish their degree, or to acquire new skills that would further make them effective as leaders. And you can do that by offering tuition reimbursements or even just offering them a program that you can uh, send them uh, sponsoring their, your employees for such training programs. And Lastly, providing opportunities for upskilling and inskilling. Para po sa mga hindi nakakaalam kung anong difference ng upskilling and inskilling, upskilling po is you uh, acquire skills that align to your work that would that you never have. Kumbaga, ito yung skills ko ngayon, pero ito yung mas kailangan ko pang skill set na matututunan ko. Now, ang in-skilling naman po is really more of uh, what is your current work. Let's say your current work is in compensation benefits. You know about compensation benefits, but you're not really good in Excel. You're not really good in uh, uh, creating formulas uh, in terms of calculating benefits. You're not very good in uh uh, creating an employee benefits program. So, in skilling is really strengthening their core skills through training. So, these are the things that you can do when you say invest in people, which is the third employee HR trends in 2024. Now, let's go to the fourth employee trend in 2024, and this will be recognize and appreciate employee contributions. Employees are human beings who are really more of, they, they uh, gravitate to, uh, in the hierarchy of, if you would remember, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, one of the top uh, needs of a uh, human being is to be recognized and feel valued, right? So employees are that because they're human beings. So it's recommended that you celebrate your employees' achievements and milestones. I mean, it's a reason why we create, we we have uh, top 
employees of the month we have top top performers of the quarter we have top employees of the year i mean you have to celebrate that even without any monetary uh gifts or whatnot recognition is very important being able to tell your employees that hey you are doing great and please continue to do great at your work right it's very important also um recognizing their milestones uh, employees have been in your company for what one year three years five years ten years those are achievements for your employees and you need to recognize this as their milestones in your company another thing is providing public recognition you can do that by of course utilizing your um uh company journal your company um uh announcement board your company chat where you really uh, recognize the employee in public kasi ano eh mas mas malaki yung timbang ng recognition pag mas maraming tao ang nakakarinig na may mabuting nagawa si employee it it builds a sense of pride whenever you reward and recognize an employee in front of other employees so please remember in providing public recognition to your employees of course you can also offer monetary and non-monetary incentives for outstanding work and I will leave that up to you. What are those monetary and non-monetary uh, rewards? Non-monetary can be an additional leaves, leave credit, uh, or uh, gift certificates, or whatnot. But again, it's important is you recognize your employees. And another, another thing as part of employee recognition and appreciation is involving employees' family in recognizing employees' best work. And you know what? One of the best programs that I've been to in my previous company is that whenever we have a top performer at work, what we do is we send out a letter to that employee, to the family of that employee, informing the family that your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife is a top performer of the month and we will sponsor your entire month's utility bill. O, di ba? Di ba? Napaka-ano yun? Kasi it, it, it creates pride in the family na naku si dad, top performer. Sagot niya yung, ano, yung utility bill natin for the month, di ba? It only, it does not only create bonding and pride to the employees, but it also, I don't save the employee uh, salary because you're, I know, you're recognizing them through it. And there's a lot of um, employee recognition involving your family. But that's the reason why we have family day. We have town halls where we also invite uh, family members of those awardees. Yeah, that's very important. So recognize and appreciate employee contributions is still a top trend in 2024. Now, number five is creating a positive work environment. And a lot of companies, a lot of leaders, even HR, keeps on forgetting this, that a positive work environment creates productive employees. And when I say positive work environment, hindi lang to ano ha, hindi lang to word service, but it's really embedded in your culture. And you can do that by, of course, fostering open communication, empowering employees to make their decisions, celebrating, of course, their success as part of your watch recognition, and creating a sense of community. That is very important for you to be able to. Uh, uh, create a positive work environment to your employees. Um, am I being here? Uh, may na comment kasi na there's no audio. Can someone uh, confirm if I am being heard, if there is an audio? Hello? Team, can you uh, please say or inform me if, uh, if I'm being here? Okay, super Lino Dao. Thank you very much, Mentor Tina. Thank you very much. Kasi may nag-comment na, ano, na wala do audio. So, again, creative, creating a positive work environment is very important because that's the way of ensuring that your employees are, uh, kumbaga, your employees 
are fully engaged and they are um they, they would have their pride at work so creating a positive environment is again one of the hr trends in 2024 now why is employee experience extra why why is ex or employee experience drive your 2024 plans how does it drive your 24 plans number one because of employee experience this is the sum of the employees perception of the interaction within an organization and if the ex employee experience is positive believe me as i mentioned earlier at the start of the presentation 12 percent increase in productivity and revenue diba? for for those companies who have highly engaged employees so that's point number one point number two a positive employee experience has been shown to have significant impact on the company's bottom line and that is your revenue again that's an increase in your revenue third is organizations that can create positive experience by providing employees the right resources the right training the right uh, tools to be successful and recognizing employee accomplishments creates a culture that employee would cherish and would value. And of course, that would mean lower attrition, lower uh, em employee disengagement, uh, lower labor cases, right? Lower labor disputes. Point number four, companies with highly engaged workforce outperforms their competitors. Again, balik tayo sa data ng Gallup, 12% more productive ang mga companies with employees that are highly engaged. Point number five, the company's employee experience is an important brand that is highly relevant to your stakeholders, clients, and future manpower. That's the reason why in the past two, three years, I know it, if you would uh, look into Facebook and you will look into LinkedIn, napakarami mga companies ang, ano, ang nag-a-apply ng best place to work, di ba? Yung mga brand, yung mga recognition ng best place to work. Kasi it's very important. One, if your organization has been recognized to be a best place to work or your, you have high employee engagement, what will happen is that your client will be confident with your ability to be productive and also that you will be able to support them if they scale up their requirements or business needs with your with uh regards to your your uh, stakeholders of course pag uh, mataas ang employee experience tataas ang productivity mas mataas ang revenue and for your future manpower diba uh, new graduates or those people who are seeking for work, ano ba yung normal hinahanap nila? Not only mataas ang sweldo, not only uh, magandang benefits, but ano ba yung culture ng company na to? That's the reason why a lot of uh, applicants right now are really more focused into doing their due diligence on what is the kind of culture your company has and what kind of leadership you have in your organization. Because kahit mataas kayo magpasweldo, kahit marami kayong benefits, kung masama naman ang reputation nyo sa industry because of uh, low employee experience or bad employee experience, you will find it very hard to attract talent. If if you are not able to attract the right talent, then your company will fail in this competition of talents. And at the end state, your company might close down. Point number six is company's philosophy as well as its policy and process should support employee experience. This is a reminder po para po sa mga HR leaders, people leaders, company owners. Please look into your policies and processes. Are your current policies and processes supportive of creating a great employee experience to your workers. If not, kung wala pa kayo ng mga programs sa dabanggit ko kanina ng sa part ng HR Trends in 2024, then you have to uh, strategize 
and create programs that will support employee experience. Now, that is the basically my presentation. This is actually a presentation that I uh, created and I uh, presented during the World HR Summit. But please feel free to connect with me. Please follow me on LinkedIn. Search lang po Darwin Rivers. Hindi na po ako makakapag-add ng... Um, Makapag-add, pero you can add me, uh, you can follow me in LinkedIn. Also, please follow me in Facebook. My official Facebook page is Coach Darwin Rivers. And if you're looking for a speaker or if you're looking to connect or if you're looking to sponsor the Philippines HR Group in all of our programs, please reach out to me. My email is darwinrivers at yahoo.com. And uh, you can also call me the... These are my numbers. And please, please continue to uh, strive to uh, grow in your career. And maraming maraming salamat po sa patuloy niyong support. And not only in the Philippines HR Group, but also here at the HR Cafe. Usapang Trabaho po iba pa. We've been around for four years now. We've started this uh, show at the height of the pandemic. March 2020, we've had 160 episodes already. We've guessed all of the who's and who's in the Philippines in terms of HR, even the brightest leaders uh, in the globe. And we will keep on doing this because we would like to give value to the community. Maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, thank you for giving me time in presenting to you what are the 2024 HR trends. Thank you, Coach Darwin. Right now, we have over 100 people who are watching the show. Uh, Bless, Bless Silda Samonte Haranilla is saying hello, mentors watching from Pagsanhan. Mary Chris Rahe, Rojo Gule is watching naman from LinkedIn. We also, we will add Sir Mom Jamie for this event. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to tap it on our comment box so we can read it to Coach Darwin. Now, read, now listening to your presentation, it seems very logical naman talaga that companies should protect their culture and their yung keeping employee retention by improving on the experience, employment experience, experience of the Correct. company, of the employee. Correct. It sounds so logical. Where is the disconnect. Bakit marami pa rin nagreklamo na ayaw nila sa companies nila? At kung makapagpalit lang sila ng trabaho, gagawin nila. Coach Darwin, bakit kaya there is that disconnect? I think there is a disconnect because uh, there are a lot of opportunities for companies to actually share to the employees. Ano ba itong mga programs and activities or policies na aligned into employee experience. Alam mo, I've I've uh, uh, talked to a lot of employees during whenever I conduct interviews. I say, oh, nanggani ka naman sa malaking kompanya, nanggani ka naman sa magandang mm -hmm. kompanya. Bakit umalis ka pa? And I know the kind of benefits, the kind of culture, and how these companies are be are paying their employees. And as sabi ng employee, ng applicant sa akin, kasi sir, ganto ganyan. So hindi nila alam, maski yung employee, hindi nila alam ko ano yung mga benefits sila, ano yung mga programs sa pagpwede nilang makuha sa company, ano yung mga policies that actually supports their uh, growth and development. So there is a need for companies to always reiterate, to always reorient employees uh, what are the different programs, processes, and policies that support employee experience. That's the reason why hindi lang basta onboarding kasi normally ginagawa ng HR sinasabi lahat sa onboarding, di ba? Dapat even after onboarding, after six months, meron ding re-onboarding. And then dapat merong annual discussion ng what are the different benefits, what are the different employee programs, what are the different uh, activities that the company offers and employees. It's really more of proper communicating to the employees what the company can offer. Another problem that I'm seeing is not all leaders are supportive of the programs and policies that companies would have uh, in line with employee experience. And 
I think there is also a need for a lot of leaders to be trained. That's the reason why, di ba, ang dami-dami ng mga trainers ngayon, tulad, tulad mo, Mentor Tina, tulad ni Jake, tulad ni Jamie, tulad ni Oli, ni nila Alan, ni Rona, na talagang very active into teaching leaders, business leaders, employers, frontline managers, Ano ba yung dapat maging mindset nila when it comes to engaging employees in, in, in when it comes to managing employees? Because oftentimes, there are, as sabi ko nga, there are certain biases, there are certain um, gaps in understanding and gaps in terms of leadership ang, ano, ang naghihinder para sa total employee experience. Another thing that I could share would be, aside from proper communication, aside from leadership, uh, would be really improving the current uh, programs that your company has. Kasi marami mga mga companies, basic or minimum programs lang yung ino-offer. Kasi ang iniisip nila, gastos to investment. Diba, Tina, normally, as an, as an employer, you would, you, would, you would see na, nako, pag may mga gato activities, gastos na naman yan, investment na naman yan, that will take out from my revenue. But leaders for, forget that there are non-monetary benefits and relationships that you can actually strengthen to ensure employee experience. Would you believe um the mere the mere act of asking your employee how are they right how are they today uh making sure that uh that uh ano ba, yung yung pangangailangan nila yung mga office supplies ay available for them yung si- simple things can actually create a good employee experience and and that is what some leaders employers are forgetting so uh, do not just offer basic, but try to think out of the box. What are the things that you can actually do to strengthen the employee experience of your employees? What you said is really true. Actually, a very poignant question is, when was the last time the HR manager talked to an, a fellow employee or rank and file? It's usually because it's the line managers. And when has line managers really talked to employees? Yung rank and file yung on the ground. If you've really noticed, trabaho ng trabaho, pero not always kinakausap. Jamie, you've worked for many companies. Why do you think there's that disconnect na everyone knows that the company should treat employees better, but it doesn't really happen in the Philippines? Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I've noticed is sometimes kasi like the core values and the mission and vision are very important, which I believe na nabanggit ni Coach Darwin a while ago. Sometimes, and I notice ko talaga, to be honest, when I used to work in the Philippines like uh, like more than 10 years ago, uh, parang when we were onboarded, parang bibigay ng HR, uh, yung employee's handbook, counting orientation, but I never really experienced na ano siya, in-immerse talaga kami at makita siya how it's put into practice practically. While, nung nagpunta na ako overseas, kabalik tanan. Ang HR talaga, HR team, we try to really immerse yung mga, kahit ano yun na consistent sila, kahit na anong international brand na mapuntahan ko. Kaya yun yung sabi ko, uh, naku, how I wish, ganito din sa Philippines. At nakikita ko naman, nakikita ko naman marami na, like what you've said also, but siguro, to answer your question, Tina, baka meron pang ilan din na hindi pa nila na-adapt yun na kailangan maintindihan din ng mga, ng mga empleyado. Hindi lang leaders eh. It's actually how it will transcend uh, doon sa sabi mo nga kanina, rank and file. So, paano mapapasimple ng leaders? How can it be seen in them na ito ay hindi lang posters on the board that, uh, you know, it's not only the posters colorful na binabago pag employee survey or may mga poll survey, pero it should be everyday na nararamdaman, nakikita, pinuput into practice kasi yung EX, it must be seamless. Sabi nga ni Coach Darwin kanina from the very start, dun sa ano pa lang, di ba, yung pre-employment pa lang. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, pre-hiring. And then after that is makita siya all throughout. Because the experience is, uh, kaya nga yung, uh, basta CX naman, kapag yung sa kliyente, I always say nga, 
kasi nga tinatanong nila ako, so how can we ensure na maganda ang ating ano, a great customer excellent service? I always tell them it starts from within. Because how can you, di ba, when you squeeze an orange, it will hindi naman magka-come out ng apple juice eh. What will come out will be the same juice of whatever fruit it might be. So dapat EX, it must start with EX and it must start from us. So siguro yun, baka kailangan pa i-reinforce natin sa, ano, sa, sa ating mga companies. Tingnan natin, how are we really putting this into practice? If you say those core values, uh, how is it translated in action in words? Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to greet, yeah. We'd like to greet fellow people who are watching us. So let, sabi niya, Sam Sapo is saying, having a great weekend watching to you guys. Rough Danica Gambong is leaving heart messages. Sabi po ni, eto maganda tong tanong and maybe masagot ni Sir Jake then later on. Sabi niya, uh, how to draw a line between absenteeism versus encouragement to use the employees earn leaves. Kasi, eto, may personal experience na ako, some, some companies dati nasanay na ang thinking ng management, if I don't give 12 to 15 days of leave, na then I will not be able to hire. But as a result, by giving 15 vacation leaves and 15 sick leaves, technically, everybody's absenteeing every month, every day, every month. Mga at least two to three times per month. And as a result, business is disrupted. Eh, nagbigay ka nga ng leave, tapos magre-reklamo ka na no, they're taking those leaves. Diba? Ganun yung problema ng management eh. Nagsusulat ng policy, ang ganda ng policy, lahat ng tao tumanggap na pa si, thank you sir. Pero pag nawawala na, tapos may critical work day, nagre-reklamo na yung client, nagre-reklamo na yung management, where do you draw the line? Practical application ha, pagdating Sir Jake? Yeah. Um, first, uh, I'd like to bank on dun sa sinabing communication before. In HR, there's no over-communication. And as we do the processes and uh, craft all the policies that we have in our company, we always look at the people side and the business. Ganun naman, di ba? Uh, we are the business partner. But looking at the absenteeism and the encouragement of employees, how to utilize their uh, earned leaves is really different thing, no? Um, sometimes I always share with with most of the people I've worked to with is fair is not enough and enough is not fair. So sometimes the the company give uh, enough leave. Later on they will say it's unfair, no? Sasabihin nila na hindi pa rin sapat. Even they will leave every month. But later on they will also uh, on the other hand the employees will say okay, 12 days is enough. But the company would say naman na it's unfair na nangyayari ito. So that's happening right now kay Timothy no Castillo that paano nga yun idodraw talaga. So I think it's really a communication and a proper planning. So in an operation, like for example, um, during Christmas break or New, Year, New Year's break, wala namang gusto magtrabaho kung tutuusin. Di ba? But with the operation na meron tayo in a proper communication down the line, they may uh, they may feel how important we have to work, okay? And at the same time, to leave yung mga family natin na nagsiselebrate. So, um, in such a way, uh, ang employee ay lalapit sa employer na can I take a leave? But the employer may reject or approve it or sometimes meron silang ma maraming leave Papano yun i-utilize? It's, it's really a proper communication. And again, there's no over-communication in HR. So it's a, a continuous uh, planning and communication sa bawat isa. So I think that's the authority na meron ka. And when you have that communication, we will go back to employee empowerment. The author, the, for them to be able to decide on their own and to also to have the authority over the matter na gusto nila sa kanilang uh, career. Coach Darwin, any insights? Siguro just to ano, piggyback on what um, uh, mentor Jake has already mentioned and also in align, align with the question, that's where not only proper planning, but, prop, but creating 
policies that would safeguard the business interests. And when I say uh, safeguard the business interest, syempre, di ba, you know that there are X number of leaves that you're providing in the organization. Let's say uh, vacation leaves. So make sure that you have a policy that employees can only use vacation leave if they are able to meet certain requirements. Let's say filing it two weeks prior to the, uh, to the uh, said leave or to the leave that they would like to take. Kasi at least for those two weeks, mapaplan mo na yung manpower mo ahead of time. Now, for those who are u- utilizing um, sick leave, now create a policy where if it's a sick leave, then make sure na hindi na nagdadahilan na nagkasakit si employee or baka hindi naman talaga siya nagkasakit. Diba? Para mawala yung ambiguity, make sure that there's a policy na when the employee comes back, there uh, the requirement would be for him or her to have a medical certificate coming from your accredited clinic or hospital. That would erase any ambiguity na na ano na nagdahilan lang siya para gamitin ng sick leave niya. So those are examples, no? Basic examples. So you can actually create or you can also think out of the box basta in line lang with the labor laws you can create policies that would support business needs and still provide the benefits of uh, providing employees ample time of work life balance ample time of employee leaves thank you timothy for sending actually this question is very close to my heart because i act, i have inherited a group of people who are so used to 15 days of vacation leave and 15 days of sick leave. So, dapat kasi 2.5 days of leave lang siya per month. But because of circumstances, lalo na nung December, uh, umaabot ng 4, 5 to 7 and above days per month ang nagiging leaves nila. Which, by the way, they have earned. So, for me, parang sabi ko nga, when, a, when the management made the policy, they had to hire two times, three times more people as plan B and plan C for all the people who are taking leaves. So, <laughs> na, na defeat yung purpose din. Yung tao, medyo yung utak nila hindi na masyado sa trabaho kasi they're looking forward to their leaves per week. So, if you're doing five days of work, nagiging four. If six days of work, nagiging five. On an almost bi-weekly basis. I think it's best for management to look at it from a cash perspective versus practicality. A 30-day sick leave, work uh, vacation leave, is like 14th month pay. If attendance is important to you, maybe consider transforming all those leaves into cash instead Correct. and offer that to your staff as you transition to less number of leaves and more for bonuses, which is tied to performance and attendance. Because it's so hard for you to give it as a blanket benefit to everyone and then complain later on. Parang touch move kasi yan eh. What you give to employees, you cannot take away without any consequence. So as you transition to a stricter attendance policy, just convert to cash na lang and offer them money. If people ask for leave, so long as they ask for approval, three days, seven days prior, approve it. Pero baka have it na baka bawasan na lang ninyo yung sahod ninyo with the premise of no work, no pay. Because it is also unfair for those with perfect attendance to be paid as much as those with a lot who have been taking leaves all the time just because it's their right. It is very much prone to abuse and not practical in the long run, especially during COVID time. When, mm-hmm. <laughs> when you know, or holiday times. Because usually it's in the holiday or the peak times where these people take their leaves the most. Because when everyone's on leave, they too must take the leave itself. Mm-mm. Consider making that hard decision of converting to cash and just changing the policy. Lalong lalo for the old ones, give them cash, diba? If they take those, then it's good. It's converted to cash. And for the new ones, be a little bit stricter and penalize for actions you don't want. So for example, if complete attendance, buo, plus money. Pero if pa-absent-absent, dapat mas mababa din yung sahod nila. We have a question here. At least, siguro i-add ko lang din, no? it's also part of uh, proper communication and proper mindset by the leaders to their employees na leave benefits 
are benefits provided by the company. Hindi mm-hmm. siya hindi siya right mandated. talaga. Hindi siya man mm-hmm. hindi siya right kasi hindi siya mandated. Ang mandated lang yung SIL, yung 5 lang. Mm-hmm. So anything mm-hmm. about about 5 is considered as company initiated benefit and anything that is company initiated benefit would be in discretion by management or by your current policy. Now, mm-hmm. ang ang reason kasi na nakita ko kung bakit lagi na utilize ng mga employees ang leave nila kasi ang mindset nila is karapatan kong mag-leave. Sayang diba? pag hindi ginamit. Sayang pag hindi ginamit. Karapatan ko to. This is my right. But basically, make them understand from the onset pa lang that the leave benefits is not a right but a mm-hmm privilege given by your organization. It's a benefit given by your organization. There's a reason why there are certain guidelines attached to it. Mm. We have a question by Sir Eds Nugid Ladrazo asking, Good afternoon, Sir Darwin. Can you share what are your tools to measure if the employees are satisfied with their overall experience in the company? There's a lot of tools that you can actually do. Uh, we normally have yung employee quarterly survey, may mga employee social weather, annual social weather survey tayo. Uh, we also get feedbacks from our FGD discussion or focus group discussion. We also take uh, uh, all the inputs coming from our uh what you call this, the employee box or yung tinatawag natin, ano, suggestion box or employee complaints box, di ba? Kung ano man yun, kung anong tawag yun doon, pero sa amin kasi, employee, uh, parang ano ito eh, employee's voice na nag, nag uh, huhulog sila doon ng papel, sinalagay nila kung ano yung mga concerns sila and we take that into consideration. All of these, anything that is documented coming from the employees should be part of your data for employee experience. Jamie? Uh, for us, it's the same. Similar to what Coach Darwin had mentioned. In addition, siguro, I think, nakadagdag sa companies ko din. Yung mga higher, uh, like, let's, let us say, officer or even our general manager or sometimes the captain also, may mga open door open door sila ng uh, communication. Sabihin nila, ito yung time slot nila. And then they also allow like uh, some employees uh, to visit them. Magpapaschedule lang sa secretary or ano. And I think that also helps. At least nakakapagbigay ng feedback na karagdagan dun sa focus group. But the rest are the same with what Coach Darwin had mentioned. And very helpful talaga yung mga tools na yun. You know, I actually visit many companies uh, because, you know, sa suppliers, customers, etc. And pagpasok ko lang ng isang company, I already know if that company is well run, if the employees are happy. Kasi minsan pagpasok mo, feeling mo tense talaga lahat ng tao, quiet sila. Tapos pag kunyari kakatok sa boss, parang takot pa. Right? So, I judge a company based on several things. First, how much are the staff comfortable with working with each other? Kasi nakiki- nafe-feel mo yung ilang ng bawat isa. I love it when I enter a company tapos may kumakanta. Kasi when kumakanta yung tao, that means they're really at ease at their, you know, they're just singing like a K-pop song or something, they're humming a tune. That really means that that company is, well, is very comfortable. Pag nakikita ko nagchichismis sila, pinapakinggan ko yung chismis. <laughs> if ang pinag-uusapan nila si Kathleen Bernardo at si, Danny, si Daniel Padilla, that's a good sign. Showbiz is wonderful. K-pop's wonderful. But if they're gossiping about each other, that's a bad sign. That means that company is not well run. I also see the connection between different committees. If I make an order, how connected are they to finance and how fin- is connected financial logistics on how fast they talk to each other. Pag ang sagot niya is, I don't know, sige, check ko pa kay finance, naku, patay talaga tayo. That means there's something wrong with that company. These people are not talking to each other. Agree. You know, like, if you go into your company, you know if the relationship between everybody is okay. Starting from the receptionist to the guard, you see how fast they work and if the most of their time is spent on work or gossiping. You really look if you, I mean, you don't really need so many tools to know if people are happy. If they're happy, you know it. 
And if they're unhappy, you know it. If they're not talking to you, they're unhappy. There's something wrong. So you have to really open your eyes and ears. Even the interview, how they sit, the first day of your people, how they actually hold the pen. Pag nakagano na sila or nagsa cellphone na sila, that's a bad sign already. So you you know like you you have those tools, but use your eyes. Look at the different, even the way they stand or the way they sit or how close they are sitting with another person. You'll already know. So for we have a next question, po. Uh, we don't want. It's more. Sabi ni Shari Ocampo. It is more easy to create programs that support EX if you get the buy-in of the owners. As X programs need to have budget. It's important to make the owners understand what is the ROI of such programs. Investment and ROI goes hand in hand. What do you think, Coach Darwin? Um, especially the capers part. If I can, if you get the buy-in, yes, of course, it's very important to get the buy-in of the owners and and manage it because they're the ones who approve the budget, diba? Right? And for them to be able to be aligned, you really have to sell it to them. That's that's where your skills as uh, in terms of presentation, in terms of uh, creating a business case to your leaders comes into place. You have to to make to show them what would be the effect, the ROI of this particular engagement program to the bottom line of the company. Kailangan may numbers yan. Kailangan uh, mahikita nila na ito yung maging worth, ito yung value. Kasi kung hindi mo siya properly maipipresent, then you won't have the buy-in of your leaders because understand that part of your role as an HR is being able to understand business. And part of understanding business is to be able to know how cost and revenue is uh, no, intertwined with each other. Now, if your leader is seeing that this is cost, and not an investment, then why would the leader approve your engagement program, right? So the best way to do it is create a very, I don't know, very stringent, data-driven uh, presentation that would really sell to your leadership team why this particular program is important. Hindi pwedeng mga anecdotal lang na sinuggest kasi ni ganito, hindi po pwedeng sabihin mo na this is the best practices, na wala kang source, or sinabi ni ganito. Dapat, ano, you are able to lay down the data, lay down your sources, create numbers that would uh, pick the interest of your leadership team on why these programs and processes or activities is important, critical to the employees and the effects of it to the bottom line of the company. I'd like to greet Chris Landico and Edison Andamo, as well as Ruff Danica Gambong, who says, it helps me as a human resource in the company. Thank you for this poll. Uh, we have a question for, let's for, give it to Sir Jake. So, ang sabi po nila is, sabi na ito, Hi, Coach Darwin. My question is from my students in PUP Santa Rosa branch, HRM 3-1 and HRM 3-2. From your own perspective, how close is the Philippines with regards to being aligned with HR global practices? Una sa lahat, um, maraming maraming salamat sa uh, PUP HRM 3-1 and HRM 3-2 ng PUP Santa Rosa branch. Lahat po ng mga isko at iska ng Polytechnic University of the Philippines at mga taga University of the Philippines na nakasama namin kanina ni Coach Tina, ni Mentor Tina. Maraming maraming yeah. salamat po sa pagsubaybay nyo dito sa HR Cafe. Now, with regards to your question, are we aligned with HR Global Practices? Yes, we are. The reason for that is there's a lot of multinational companies already here in the Philippines and those best practices, global best practices, are now being practiced here in our country. The only... Now, ang tanong is, gaano kabilis yung pers yung ano yung yung uh, kumbaga kumbaga sa sponge yung pag-absorb natin ng mga best practices na yon di ba Tina I mean I we we uh, we noticed that there's a lot of best practices na ASEAN ASEAN region ini-implement naman na sa Philippines pero pagdating sa Philippines may sariling taste 
may sariling take, may sariling ano, uh, gawa yung mga leadership dito. May sarili silang interpretation. Now, that's where uh, we need to uh, guide them as HR leaders that uh, when we say best practices, global best practices, tignan muna natin. Kasi hindi naman ibig sabihin global best practices, maganda rin para sa company mo, di ba? Hindi naman ibig sabihin best practices ng isang industry applicable sa industry mo. Look at the best practices. Ano ba yung nabibigay niya? Align ba to sa industry mo? Align ba to sa organization mo? Na kung align siya, kung pareho naman, um, ano yung in-expect mong outcome. Now, kung yung outcome na to is aligned dun sa vision, mission, and goals ng organization, then you should implement it. Um, going back to the question, are we are we close in uh, uh, global HR best practices? Yes. We have all of the elements of HR global best practices. Uh, I think that we're getting there. Uh, that's the reason why the Philippines HR Group, PIMA, PSTD, and a lot more organizations are championing advancing HR because we would like to ensure that each and every employee, each and every worker will be truly world-class. How about you, Mentor Jake? Yeah, What's I your agree. Experience? Yes, correct. I agree with that. So if the question is how close, I, I think with the global, uh, looking at the uh, transactional HR before, now to the global mindset. Um, if we draw some of the things that we're currently doing now, such as employee payroll, the how we manage the benefits and the packages, yung mga paniniwala natin sa metrics, data and analytics are very important now for us to have an informed decision with the, the, the managers. So I think we with all those things, uh, again, Tama yung sinabi ni uh, Coach Darwin that some of the things may not be applicable for, for us. But looking at how we are now uh, transition from the transactional to uh, uh, transactional to more of like a global in terms of the recruitment, hiring, nandun, no? So tumaas ng ating productivity and we also enhance the employee engagement. Even the cultural literacy na tinatawag natin. Kasi nowadays, a lot of um, even Asians or uh, foreigners are coming to the Philippines. So before, di ba yung part ng cultural literacy natin is very rigid. Nandito pa lang tayo. But now we also accept all other um, various um, culture and differences natin. So employee management, I believe nandun na rin tayo. Engagement, we've been looking to a lot of um, partnership as well with all other organization. Compensation and benefits, we always look at the market as well and how we improve the benefits and have a fair compensation to our uh, employees. Uh, basically, what's important right now, which is very trendy, is also the mental health. And we always wanted to provide or create a safe um place in the workplace. So, yan yung makikita natin when we look at all um, other global perspective na na, narito na sa Pilipinas. Hmm. I find that uh, the question can be reshifted in such that how professional is the Philippine workforce in the Philippines versus other countries? Kasi we have a lot of international firms who are setting up shops here. And the truth is, many of them are complaining that many employees here are not as professional. I had to give them a primer on what absence without leave means. Because in other countries, a wall is not life. It is not very common for people just to go a wall or immediately resign just because they feel like it without proper turnover. Tapos pag hihiram, kukunin mo pa yung computer, magagalit pa sa'yo, itudole ka pa. So there is really a very bad mindset of foreigners coming to the Philippines because there is always that feeling that they will be scammed. So instead of thinking about how to align ourselves to the global mindset, I think it is the responsible also of employee employers here to start disciplining their people on how to be professional. And I think it comes with 
starting to be quite strict as well in the execution of their policies. Because one person asked, nga, sabi niya, the supervisor approved the leave and then later on complains about the absenteeism of the employee. Filipinos are not very confrontational and we usually like to give if we can. But the problem is sometimes it's already bordering on sobrang personal na. Nangungut, nagpapautang tayo sa mga fellow employees kasi kung naaawa tayo na wala silang pamasahe, tapos magagalit tayo kung bakit hindi sila nagbabayad. The company, all companies have rules and I think it's important for HR to know that they're guarding those rules and policies for good reason. If alam naman ninyo na wala sa rules, kunyari may emergency leave na na-apply, diba? pero dapat ang policy nyo for leave is three days before, then you have to be courageous and actually decline that leave. Even if the person begs you for it. I know it's not very empathetic, but we have to instill some sort of discipline because if the execution of HR is not consistent, then nobody really has to follow the rules because case-to-case basis pala. Tsaka if umiyak ka, tsaka nagluhod ka, papayagan ka pala. I mean, you have to be very careful about that because if we don't start disciplining as well, Ako, I, I'm very proud because I, pagdating ng employee sa akin, walang ID, wal, lagi sila, you, you know, like they're not very straight, they're not very professional. And I'm very proud that most people who stay with me become more professional and very hireable at higher prices in the future. It really, you have to really train the employees. You don't take it for granted pag pumasok sila sa'yo, professional na sila. And then you complain, dapat professional sila, hindi nila ginagawa yan. If you're always just complaining, then you're also part of the problem. If you want people to be disciplined, then you have to train them talaga kasi otherwise, they really won't learn the lesson. Last question pa before we end the show kasi I know everyone still has to go to church. Mom Jamie, uh, how do you maximize the use of talent pool when it comes to attracting top talents in your organization? And isa pa. Do you do you maximize the use of a talent pool when it comes to attracting top talents your organization? How do you provide an exceptional candidate experience? Sabi ni Mike Kuhn. Yeah, so it's very important uh, that we take into consideration, like a take, really take a look at what we have uh, so that at least like what we have in the organization that people can be inspired with then so that at least we can attract even more people. Uh, like, for example, in the companies that I have worked with, marami sa kanila from rank and file, nag, talagang to, ano sila, umangat from rank and file hanggang meron ng hotel director. So yung mga example na yon when we have our career, for example, uh, career development uh, talks or kaya nag advertise kami. So it depends, meron yung pinag, I invite them for talks so that at least uh, internally, uh, makakatulong yon for people who wants to grow in the company at magkaroon ng ano, magkaroon sila ng inspiration that, oh, pwede pala. Even if I'm in the lowest of the uh, ranks, pwede palang I can uh, rise up to this higher uh, kung maga rank. And then external naman, same thing then I we sometimes encourage, if not most of the time, uh, from those who actually have grown inside uh, the company uh, from one rank to another or kaya pwedeng transition that from one department to another uh, so that we could create different types of advertisement also that can inspire other people uh, outside uh, who would want to join uh, the company so that at least they know that, oh, there's an opportunity to grow. If I, for example, uh, dito ako sa department na pumasok, pero, you know, I see na mas mag-excel pala ako. Yung, uh, as long as I, you know, I gain some competencies in another department, how does this company actually support it? So we try to communicate it in such a way it will be very attractive then. And then itong isa, how do you provide an exceptional candidate experience? Uh, it's very important. Nowadays, we do have like, for example, yung mga HR recruitment tools, right? Uh, hoping that all the recruitment officers talaga, they are using it in such a way na kung ano man yung process ng isang candidate, 
they get updated at hindi na lang no answer kasi going back to to what coach Darwin had mentioned a while ago hindi man natin ma-hire siguro yung candidate na yun pero may impression na sila ay hindi naman sila nag-get back sa akin eh parang sa kanilang perception naman ay unprofessional yung company yon pero even if sabihin na natin a candidate may not be accepted regardless of what rank pero yung may mga automatic reply naman tayo di ba it's a matter lang yan ng ano kasi i used to handle there was a point in time in my career in hr i was uh, tasked to do online recruitment using Kaleo. so sa akin talaga may mga marami siyang kailangan uh, kumaga i, i set pero you just simply have to talagang babalikan mo lang siya para mabigyan ng response yung mga nag-tick line. And I think uh, that could definitely, the way you will word yung mga salita on how you will encourage them kung hindi man sila, they did not make it right now, uh, you know, they, they could have other opportunities and we will keep it in our uh, talent pool then. Uh, that definitely uh, creates a great sakin ha as an employee as an employer or recruitment officer and at the same time ako yung employee then or a candidate uh, kahit paano uy hindi man ako natanggap meron man lang kahit feedback hindi yung naka-ere kasi di ba nagkaroon na ng uh, parang impression din sa atin sa HR sometimes na kapag no communication is communication then pero maganda na professional then ayan <laughs> thank you Tina Hi, Tina. I think you're on mute. How about you, Coach Darwin? How would you know? Okay. As we I, I would agree on what Jamie mentioned earlier by uh, having your tenured leaders or people who, who uh, grew to the ranks would be the storytellers of your organization. Um, them telling their story uh, with new hires and with, let's say, uh, in different schools where you're attracting talents, diba? whenever they tell their story, they're telling their story from their own experience. And that would, what, um, make those uh, future employees of yours or your applicants to see that, yeah, we can actually do the same. We, we can actually achieve the same that this is something doable for us. Kung baga, kung kaya niya, kaya ko din, di ba? Um, another thing is, yung sa talent pool naman is really more of uh, creating a funnel, eh. Creating a funnel where each and every employee, each and every applicant in your funnel are being reached out to make sure that they're warm. Kasi um, one of the things that recruiters forget is, o oh, sige, a hundred people na tawagan ko, meron akong a hundred people na pool. Pero once na nagkaroon na ako ng requirement, magugulat na lang ako yung hundred people, hindi na pala active, hindi na pala warm. Kasi fault mo yun, kasi hindi ka nag reach out sa mga candidates. You don't provide uh, uh, updates, you don't make sure that they are uh, updated with what's happening in the whole application process or you don't provide them with uh, opportunities that they might be interested, other opportunities that they might be interested in your organization. Be keeping those in your talent pool warm is very important. And Almo, I really am um, uh, tawag dito, I really admire yung mga recruiters. And I have recruiters na mga friends ko. Ha. Yung mga recruiter friends ko na five years, ten years ko nang kilala, na kahit hindi ka nagkakarap ng trabaho, kinukumusta ka pa din. Yung di pong ano, uh, kinukumusta ka, uy, kumusta ka na, ganyan. Tapos, I mean, they would, they would, ano, they would reach out. For them, uh, relationship is very important. And why? Because from the, if they establish a good relationship with you as the candidate, when they will have a niche or a priority uh, vacancy that they'll be able to sell to you, have, with that relationship, I'm sure mapapa-oo ka nila, di ba, as a recruiter, di ba? So it's really building relationships, not only with your employees, but also your talent pool. Another thing would be... Um, 
uh, having your your uh, current employees as your ambassador hindi lang yung mga tenured employees hindi lang yung mga employees na na talagang nag-grow sa ranks but even your own employees make them as ambassadors of your company, di ba? Kaya nga ang hilig-hilig ng mga companies na mamigay ng mga ano eh, ng mga t-shirts, jackets, ng mga mugs, di ba? Na merong branding. Kasi yung mga jacket, ano yan eh, di ba? Pag naglakad lang sa ISO or sa Makati, suot-suot ang jacket ng company mo, it's pride, di ba? It's a, it's a free advertisement uh, for your organization. It's something that would uh, make people... Uh, be aware that uh, your company is existing and uh, they would research about your organization or they kumbaga, they would have may recall yung brand value mo. So, those are just a few things that I would recommend. And I'm sure, Jake, would you like to add anything on what I've already mentioned or what Mentor Jamie has already said? Yeah, I think I definitely agree to all the things that you mentioned about maintaining, uh, keeping the talent warm in your pipeline. So um, we've also mentioned that it's very important to provide yung feedback. So, and uh, I'm, I'm just doing a recap. Okay? And also to engage with personalized content because um, most of the time, diba, our recruiters will send it in blast. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, in the talent pipeline, if you wanted to keep it warm, then at least engage them in more of like a personal content mm-hmm. wherein they feel valued as well and say na, oy, ako talaga to yung hinahanap nila. And uh, things that when when we have to fill in the difficult position and nandyan ka naman or makakatulong ka, you're always there to help. So with that, I'm, I'm just looking at the things now na how to really, uh, you mentioned about funneling but when we browse uh, through our talent pool so uh, very uh, need to do is to filter no yung mga yung in terms of ability and experience ng mga tao so itabi na lang muna natin yan at yun yung madalas natin silang kakamustahin sabi nga natin and then looking at their career goals kasi once something is open for that position so we can always tap them so with that, yun yung, yun yung more of like a recap of what uh, uh, mentor Jamie and Coach Darwin uh, shared with us. Sa, sa akin din is that you have to ensure that the person who's interviewing is not resigning. Kasi ang dami ta. <laughs> diba? Minsan kasi assign lang tayo ng assign ng tao. Tapos we're not, we didn't know pala na mukhang sobrang bored yung tao doon sa pag interview so it's very procedural and administrative. Tapos ang sungit-sungit pa. We have to be very careful that with all our efforts, tapos pagdating sa interview, nakaka-turn off. Kasi they, they, they have, most employees have neutral thoughts of the company. But they have a lot of thoughts on the interviewer. Pag pangit yung interviewer, kahit anong ganda ng talent pool mo, syempre hindi tatanggapin yung trabaho kasi yun yung unang nag-meet sa kanila, eh, Right? So you have to be sure that the person you present to your top top empl- ano, applicants are your most impressive leaders. The ones na um, bakit ka nag na, bakit ka pumayag na magtrabaho sa maliit tong kumpanya na maliit ng sweldo tapos hindi ka pa nagre-resign kahit na ang dami kahit na mukhang hindi naman kayo top. You have to find those superstars in your company and have them face your top applicants because they're the only ones whom the applicants will believe when they answer the question why did you choose to work here why did you choose to go abroad or work for a multinational company at higher pay and when these applicants listen to the answer they will be impressed and say you know what i don't want to work for this company i want to work for this person and i want to be working under him so he can teach me to be like him because i want to be like him that's one way for you to attract. Kasi dun mo mabubudol yung tao by sending your top top performers. Don't send your worst performers to interview. If alam mo this is gold, you really want to court the employee, that applicant, send your best, best person to face that person. Sigurado, if your top salesperson can charm your largest client, they will be able to charm this top applicant to join you. And with that, we're all at mess at the end of the show. 
Any last words? We'll start first with Mom Jamie, uh, with Sir Coach Darwin as the guest speaker, then Mom Jamie, then Sir M Mentor Jackson, and then myself. Okay. Coach Darwin. Um... First and foremost, again, madaming maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng mga uh, taga-subaybay namin ngayon sa live. We have over 150 people uh, that is watching us right now live. Maraming maraming salamat po. I'm sure thousands pa yung uh, ma ma nono dito sa replay. Thank you po sa patuloy niyong pagsuporta sa HR Cafe, usapang trabaho po at iba pa. Maraming salamat po sa patuloy niyong pagsuporta not only to me, but to all of the mentors, Coach Rona, Coach Tina, Coach Alan, and all of the, our new mentors here, um, mentors Jamie, mentors Jackson, uh, mentors Bonnie, mentors Oli, uh, Alan, and um, Neil, and, and uh, those new mentors that we will be having. Uh, we are growing. We are making sure that we continue to provide value in your Sunday afternoon. This is to maintain your Sunday learning, free learning habit here at the HR Cafe. At lagi po that for us to be able to really be good leaders, we need to put ourselves at the shoes of our employees and understand where are they coming from, what are they experiencing, and what can we do to alleviate whatever concerns, problems, or issues that they have. That's it from my end. Mentor Jamie? Yes, again, uh, once again to everyone, thank you for watching. And for me, uh, I just want to simply say, that uh, what you're doing to support, of course, the, the company uh, really matters a lot. And specifically, of course, being the core of the company, sabi nga nila pag HR, di ba, we are the heart uh, that supports everyone else. And, heart and spine. <laughs> yes, heart and spine. I agree with that. So I'm uh, looking forward for you to continuously just enjoy what you're doing. Uh, put the passion and love, kasi sabi nga pag andun yung passion, di ba, ang daling ma-engage ang iba tao so it must come from us first so that at least they can eat like ano yung aura natin yung nagatranscend talaga sa kanila and it will be easier to continuously engage them and just simply remember that our ex is uh usually equivalent to the cx that we provide also to external clients mentor jake all right so good afternoon again everyone uh, as we were about to close the this episode so thank you for watching and for uh listening to the trends and the topics that was discussed earlier so keep on um uh listening listen to the hr cafe at sigurado marami kayo matututunan na iba't ibang perspective and also practices na pwedeng yung ma uh, ma adapt uh, personally and professionally so with that thank you and see you next time again week next week and for me just to close the show i'd like to recap that coach darwin has given a lot of points that you can watch on the replay and i challenge everyone to actually look inwards and onto this coming week to see how they can apply what coach darwin has taught us Kasi usually sa atin, mahilig tayo, like parang mga complaints ng tao, di ba? Pasok dito, labas dito. <laughs> and what's the point, right? If you're going to do active listening, you should also have active execution. And he's right. I think 2024 is a very good time to revisit the inwards of your company and to see whether your employees are really enjoying working for you or are they already thinking of going to somebody else. Don't worry about those for who are resigning for personal reasons. I mean, there's nothing you can do to help them. But I think the question is, does your company actually have a very good case for employees to stay in? Or are just, they just working there as a jumping board for a better opportunity elsewhere? I think we as HR know if our company is a good place to work in, right? And we see it through every single employee from the rank and file up to upper management. I think we need to get off our high horses and look into the different small groups of our company that we, that exist without our knowledge and then feel the pulse on whether they are satisfied with us, satisfied with our with the company itself and make sure that it's very comfortable, a comfortable, pleasant, respect 
full place for an employee to stay in. If there is any conflict within the company or outside the company, uh, diba? be proactive in solving them. Kasi you want to make sure that everyone's happy. People are looking at leaves and earn. Alam mo bakit magdami nag-leave? <laughs> Kasi they want to have a break from everybody else and that at work. Kasi sobrang toxic, di ba? Do you get it? You have to, don't wa- say, bakit lagi nag-leave tong tao na to? Kasi ayaw nila makita mukha mo. Di ba? Because a lo- I have a lot of employees, they don't want to go home. <laughs> Because they feel that home is a toxic place and work is a very pleasant place to escape from home. Diba? That's a mind shift. Instead of looking at it na create an, taba ang sabi ni Coach Darwin, create a company wherein people will want to stay inside the company and work with the different colleagues because really, when they get out of your company, it's a very evil, messy place out there. When they jump to another company, marami palang gossip, marami chismosa, marami magnanakaw. Ay, di ba, balik sila sa'yo, di ba? Pupunta sa lahat sa abroad, tapos yung pala, masyadong abusive yung employer, masyado silang kinakurse. So, syempre, gusto na bumalik sa'yo. Make your company into a very strong company. Kahit an- ilan tao kayo, kahit magkano sahod ninyo, make it into a very positive employee experience and kayang-kaya ninyo yan. Hindi nyo, kaya mag- hindi nyo kailangan dalhin sila sa Singapore para magstay sila. Alam mo yun? <laughs> minsan, minsan sasamahan mo lang sa cafeteria, sila pa magbabayad, okay na. Because some, the human factor is forgotten talaga. So, I think it's a very good reminder in 2024 with Coach Darwin that to take care of our employees, we have right now in our organization because they are more valuable than anybody else na hindi pa pumapasok sa, emplo- sa company natin. If we can take care of the employees, we have. Pag walang mawala dyan, pag walang nag-resign dyan, hindi nyo na kailangan maghanap ng bago. ba? Diba? <laughs> then you can retain all the top talents. You don't have to train them too much anymore. You just have to take care of what you have. And with that, Thank you so much to everyone who are watching the HR Cafe. Usapang trabaho, buhay, di ba ba? Again, next week, 3 p.m. Please watch again for another guest expert. Thank you, everyone. I'm Coach Darwin, Mentor Jamie, Mentor Jason. Thank you, everyone, for a very fun Sunday. Sunday. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.